We are live here on Plus One EXP's Roll for Content channel. My name is Tony Osunda. I'm Chief Alchemist here at Plus One EXP, which is a weird little brand that multi-classes in tabletop game design, beard, and skincare alchemy in the Bardic College of Content Creation. Our hope and desire is to help amazing designers find great players who love their games and help amazing players find great designers whose games they can love. We do this in a lot of ways, but the most fun one is to sit down with the designer of those games and play them. Um, everything we do here on the channel, for the most part, is oriented around how we play games better, how we play certain games. So I'm very, very excited uh, to sit down with Cesar and to talk a little bit more about, I guess this is it, uh, the game that they made, uh, the themes that it evokes, which I'm very excited to get into as we play, uh, and a little bit more. But uh, Cesar, why don't you go ahead and tell people uh, who you are, what you do, where they can find you online if you want to be found, um, and tell us a little bit about, I guess this is it. Of course. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. It's it's a pleasure to be here. Um, my name is Cesar Capacli. I am a Brazilian game designer. Uh, I use he, him pronouns. Uh, so uh, the game we're playing today is, I guess this is it. It's a uh, game that sometime last year, uh, Button Chai put out a, a contest to try and make an 18 card role-playing game. They are famous for their wallet games. So they are all with 18 cards and they come in a funny wallet. But uh, this is the first time they decided to do a role-playing game using this, the same uh, structure. So I entered the contest and ended up uh, winning it. So uh, we decided to kickstart the game and uh, we are now 47 hours before the end of the campaign. The campaign is doing very well. And uh, to tell a little bit more about the game, I think we should say this is a game about saying goodbye. So we take the role of two people that were once strongly connected and we stand before each other in the final minutes before our last goodbye. We have a lot to say and so much we know will be left unsaid. So what we have to do is, is we have to work together, so it's a co cooperative game, to try and say as much as we can before departing, but we try to be careful not to hurt each other's feelings, you know? We, we don't want to make the other person feel guilty or neglected during this conversation. We know that time won't be enough to see, say everything we want to say, and uh, but how can we make the most of this last instant together? Awesome. Um, and John and I did point out in the chat that apparently when I had to reset the go live stuff, I forgot to reset the title. But for anyone watching now or later, I'll edit that. So if you're watching this later, you would never have known that was an issue unless <laughs> I had told you. Um, no, I, I like I said, I'm, I love that theme. I love that idea. I am a huge button shy fan at, at PAX Unplugged. So I live in Philadelphia. Button Shy is across the river from me. Um, they're very nearby. At PAX Unplugged, um, I bought, because uh, their games are always coming in and out of stock, but they had everything in there and a carrier. And I bought two copies of every game they have, plus an extra one of Tussie Mussy and a number of other things that I know go in and out of stock a whole lot, and a carrying case that they had to put them all in. Um, and the guy was like, oh, so you just want like everything? And I was like, yes. Uh, everything I want it all <laughs> like give it to me now um, I, I think they do such a lot of it's handcrafted I love the design concepts that go into it they do a wide range of games but yeah this is their first RPG um, I was I loved all the top projects in that and so it's very cool to see kind of the fruition of that and even on the page itself they've got a lot of the the different um, upcoming releases that they have planned to announce so um, if you're interested in RPGs if you want an RPG you can easily fit in your pocket in its own little wallet Go check out, I guess this is it. You can also look at the other stuff coming up from Button Shy. Um, you can go to ttrpg.link slash I guess KS uh, to go right to that Kickstarter page. The link's in the description uh, also, too, if you're watching over on Facebook or YouTube. Um, but uh, you didn't come here to tell hear me talk about how you could support this game. Or maybe you did. Go check it out. Um, you came here to watch us play it and see what it's all about. So I am very excited uh, to do that. Uh, Cesar, you got a, a great like little virtual tabletop up for us that we're going to be yeah. able to play around in. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring that up where everybody else can see us. And um, we're going to step into the game. We talked about it ahead of time, but we always use a couple of different safety tools here on the channel, um, which are lines, veils, and the X card um, for this one. 
We've got we always have a line against sexual violence. But we also have a line against uh, sexuality in general on this uh, segment or sexual intimacy uh, on this um, on this stream. Um, I we haven't had any other ones, but lines are things that may happen in the world of our game, but don't happen in the course of our play of it. Veils are things that may happen um, uh, in a certain way as they come up, or we might handle them in a very specific uh, reality, or fast forward through them as they come up. And then the X card is the ability for us to say X to each other because it's just the two of us uh, to pause the game and to figure out what the issue is and then move forward in a different direction. Um, I think in a two-player game, the best safety tool is always uh, talk to each other like we're human beings uh, and treat each other with dignity and kindness. So we'll be implementing that. Uh, we also use an open door policy. So if one of us needs to pause at any point, but the game that you said takes about an hour to play. Um, so exactly. uh, we'll play through it pretty quick and then we'll talk a little bit about the experience, answer any questions people in the chat have uh, and then right. go on our way for the day. Um, but I am very excited. I've got the virtual tabletop up next to us. Uh, so why don't you uh, just kind of take us into how we start playing? I guess this is it. Sure, of course. Uh, before we even uh, handle the cards or anything on the VTT, we have some decisions to make. Okay. Namely, four decisions that uh, will comprise pretty much the setting of the game. Uh, the first two we kind of make all the, at the same time. They are... Why are we saying goodbye? And what's the nature of our relationship? So within the game, I propose some alternatives. We can come up with anything that we, we want to. So uh, some reasons why we would say goodbye could be uh, the pursuit of a dream, a career, a purpose, a vocation, or uh, a destiny, like a prophecy, a curse, a heritage, a calling. Death can be an illness, a battle wound, or the fear of bringing death to the other. Duty, a mission, a quest, a vow, a burden, an obligation, or a contract, or a divergence, a betrayal, a breakup, a disagreement you couldn't work out. Now, to the nature of the relationship, I have friends, lovers, partners, relatives, rivals, or something else entirely. So it's time for us to come up with something that will inform the, the tone of our game. Yeah. Um... I do you do you have like, you've played more than I have. Um, I did, which, yeah. Which means that you're probably going to push that onto me a little bit. But let me ask you about what have been some of your favorite things to play, or is there a type of relationship you haven't got to play yet that you really want to? Right. I think it's important to to use this space to also tell people uh, the the pitch of the game. It's very sad and heart wrenching, but. Uh, it can also be played on a more tender or even silly way if you want to. So that's the best way to like introduce your safety tools and the themes you're interested in the game. So uh, I had I have had in the playtest people playing like like Jason from Button Shy played as uh, two podcasters, two Star Wars podcasters splitting up after an argument over the prequels. So that that could be like this kind of silly foolishness. Uh, also, uh, we had a report of someone playing as uh, Snow White and Grumpy, and uh, she was saying goodbye right before leaving to live happily ever after with the prince. And uh, the last time I played, I played with Jeff Stormer from Party Wolf yeah. One Pod, and uh, we played a duo of superheroes, and uh, one of us was leaving to take the, their own path as a superhero, so that the duo was, was plenty up. I think I haven't tried anything on the, um, let's say, the fantasy side. That, okay. that could be fun, Like, uh, but there are many options. Do you have anything in mind that so, comes up to you? So Charles Ferguson Avery in the chat immediately said rivals. Um, I don't know that I want to go full adversarial, but I do like the idea of like competitive rivals. Um, uh, yeah. If we want to go fantasy, what if we um what if we leaned into like two 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 like I don't I don't want to just jump into like what types, but two people with the same goal, like a quest that we're both competing right. on that we're at the final like we've arrived at at the same time and are in the final moments <laughs> of dealing with. I think okay. a very cool space to play around in. Does that work? Oh uh, yeah, it works perfectly. So it, I can see uh, us as a uh, to solo adventurers, and uh, we were after the same quest or the same goal, and uh, we arrived at it, and uh, we are at this last scene. 
maybe we already decided maybe or splitting the thing or not that can may come up during play and uh, we know that uh, we're not going to see each other again ever so what's the reason uh, we are we're saying goodbye why why is that this mm -hmm. the end um i think i think there are two easy options one is like yeah is completion the other one is that this has gone bad for both of us and now oh. we're and now we're now we're trapped <laughs> yeah. oh i like that idea i like it a lot so uh, i can imagine we're arriving at our destination the mega thing is there but uh we just screwed it up and uh, now we we have no way out yeah maybe okay uh so uh to better inform this we can go to our third decision which is where does our goodbye take place um i um do we want to each add a couple details and maybe like i yeah yeah i kind of immediately am drawn to the image of like um like a like a like a an underground area with rising water levels like that is maybe the the immediate threat um right that we're, like we're that we're trapped underneath okay i i really like it so uh to give it a spin and uh and also add the fourth decision. The thing is, one of us has to be staying and one of us has to be leaving. So we have to decide oh. now uh, which, of, which of us will escape, essentially, and which of us will stay here. Maybe not that, maybe something else, but yeah. is, there is this decision. Is that always the fourth decision? So is it always, it is. it's always one of you is staying, one of you is going. Um, yes. So this, it's not necessarily a goodbye where you're both like the world is ending and both of us are going to die. It's a, no. it's a, it's a, something changes for one of us and not the other one. Exactly. Exactly. Like that, that, that balance is important yeah. for the game to work. I, I like that. Um, I, um, uh, why don't, why don't you decide that part? I feel like I've made a couple of choices that we've gone with, so. Right, so the, the last time I played the person staying, so I'll play the person leaving. Okay. That's okay for you? Yeah, okay. that's, that's perks. So uh, we might have the scene as uh, this rising uh, tide or rising waters in the side of a dungeon or something like that. And uh, we have your character in a worse spot than mine and throughout the game we can see it makes it clear Caesar, i'm getting a little I'm... bit of a little bit of audio um like static yep, it stopped we're good stopped yep. okay so uh we can see that uh you're not gonna make it or you're not gonna escape and i am and then the the our conversation shows that okay okay so uh do you have an like a, a maybe a character class in mind or a, a, an occupation uh, or you're just a general adventurer? Um, I think general adventurer, I'll go ahead and lean into um, more of a thiefy, roguey, sneaky capacity uh, right. than, than just generic, I guess. Okay. I am, uh, I'm leaning toward, towards a, a ranger kind of guy. So uh, maybe that, uh, that explains why I am, I'll be able to, to escape because I know, survival in some way and uh we shall give each other the, the names right what's the name of our character um do we give each other names or give ourselves names no give ourselves names yeah okay um uh i will go with my classic default when i don't have a name in my head name and i'll go with thrag <laughs> how does that T how, how... T H R A G. Thrag, okay, right. and uh, my ranger is Yuri, why not? Okay, so we have made our four decisions and uh, we are ready to play. What we have as goals here. Uh, so one of the things that uh, Butanchai asked when for this contest was, it, it has to be as much as a role-playing game as, as is a card game. So there is some, uh, mechanical objectives as well what are we trying to achieve here is trying to end the game with as few cards in our hands as possible that means that we got to say 
most of the things that we wanted to say, okay. right? The other thing, there is a, a goodbye pile right next to this 3-4 grid that represents the time of saying goodbye approaching. We want to try and end the game with as few cards in the good pile as possible as well, because the cards that are in there, they represent the things we are going to forget about, about each other and things we, we couldn't say. And the final thing that we have to work to is to have the same amount of cards in our hands. That means we uh, were we took care of each other and uh, we didn't like monopolize the last conversation. We uh, let the other person talks and, and we talked as well. Awesome. Okay. Okay. So those are the goals. What we see here on our board, this is a, uh, to the left, there's a four by three grid. Those are the cards we're going to draw from. In the middle of the table, that's the first card played. Uh, it comes there. That's the, I guess this is it card that represents the beginning of the scene, our last conversation before we say goodbye. It's right here. Okay. To the bottom of it, we have two rectangles that represent our hands, Tony. So to the left, that's my hand. There is a card in it that you probably can't see. And to the right, there is another hand that it, that's your hand with a card in it that I can't see. Okay. Make sense? Okay. All right. And to the bottom of it, there is a small cheat sheet with uh, the four symbols that comes with the cards that you can refer to when you want to remember what they mean and what mechanical effect they have. Okay? Awesome. So how do we play this? We draw cards and we play these cards on the board. These cards, they come with a word and uh, that's a prompt that informs the theme of uh, this, this conversation, what, the, the, what we were going to role play to each other. So what's your speech in this moment, pretty much. And also, this card comes with four symbols around it. If you want to show this to the audience, uh, Tony, if you click on any card and you press the space bar, it pops up on the screen and uh, it shows it up close. Cool. And I'll hold the space bar. Awesome. Okay. So these four symbols, they have meanings that inform the nature of what you're going to say. The, the clock means a memory. The star means a wish. The broken heart, it's an apology. And the diamond is a recognition. So this is the nature of what you're saying to the other person. So, for example, let's say I grab the card that says fear and I connect my card to the last card played using the memory link. That means I'm talking about a memory of a fear. If I chose the star, it's a wish about a fear, an apology about and so on. OK. When you play your cards on the board, you have to respect three things. You play like a domino, more or less, you know? Okay. So you have to connect the card you play to the last card played. Okay. Simple as that. Now, the edges that connect to each other, they have to show the same symbol. Doesn't matter if it's on the same orientation, the card can be rotated, but they have to show the same symbol. So if I decide to play it here, and I'm using uh, the memory link, you can see that the both uh, symbols are the same. If I wanted to connect through a heart, I had to rotate and connect it like that. Make sense? Yep. And the final thing that we have to take care of is uh, you can't play a card on the board if that card overlaps with a previously played card. So it may be the shape that we create here with the cards. At some point, you want to put a card on the board, but it goes over a card already played. You can't do that. OK. All right. So besides informing the, the nature of the what you're going to say, 
These four symbols also have some mechanical effects that you can see on this cheat sheet here. They may do you, they are all optional. By the end of what you say, you can choose to activate this mechanical effect. So they can make things like I pass a card to you, you pass a card to me, I play a second card, or you can skip your next draw. Why we use that? We try to use that to keep our hands with the same size in case, I don't know, I grab more cards than you or you more than me. And we are trying to end the game with the same amount of cards. So right. we kind of pass cards around. Okay. All right. The final thing is uh, every time we connect a card and uh, the sides don't align, meaning the edges are of different sizes, like the example I just gave here, that means the goodbye pile here advances. This pile of cards right next to the grid goes and bloop, eats one of our cards that we have to play. So this card won't be played in this game. This represents that we weren't in sync, maybe we were rambling a little bit, beating around the bush, and we spent time and this, this final conversation, and the time to say goodbye is approaching. Like okay. that, right? So uh, we might want to try and avoid that if we have the chance. Uh, to rotate the card, you just press R on your keyboard if you need it, okay? So that's pretty much it. Any questions? Um, yes, but. Uh, I think they'll come up and play more. Not anything that will prevent us from just starting to play. Um, right. Some, I think some things about setup and other stuff like that, but we can talk about it afterwards. Okay. That's cool. Right. So the person's thing goes first. That means you, Throg, you have uh, the option to draw one or two cards, and uh, you have to draw them from the, starting from the top left of the grid. Just drag them onto your hand. So I can either, I can take... One or two. I can either take just shelter or I can take shelter and fate, correct? Yeah, exactly. What, uh, how do you, do you choose, right? Why is this meaningful? That's a pacing mechanism. Right. How fast or, or slow the, go, the, the game will go. And also, uh, further into the game, it's an option of uh, possible connections. Maybe you see one card and you don't see a possible connection that you have uh, that you are interested in making. So you draw two cards to have more options in your hand. Excellent. Now you have two cards in your hand. You can choose either of them to play. Remembering that you have to connect it to the card that's already here on the board, to any of the sides, just respecting the linking symbol. Cool. So if I want to play floss out, I'm then going to rotate it to fit like that, correct? If you want to play a memory of a loss, but you can connect, connect to any of the four sides available and using other symbols if you want to. Does that make sense? No, say it one more time. Right. Uh, you could, uh, let me grab it for you yeah. just for a second. If you want to, in your hand, I, I feel like uh, role playing an apology about a loss, you could connect it here if you want to. Right. Or you could connect uh, a wish and uh, go here because the stars are right. connected. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Okay. Correct. So that's up to you. Oh yeah, I can I can do any of them. Yes, I was choosing memory specifically. Yeah, that's, that's yes. Right. Okay, you're, so you're choosing a memory. Yeah. All right. Um, Once uh, you're connected, now is your time to role play it. Pretty much, what you have to do is pretty much narrate what you say. Uh, put yourself in the position of the person. Understand how they'll feel. Uh, revisit our decisions that we made. You can envision where we are, the surroundings, the sounds, and say them either in the first person, the third person, whatever you feel more comfortable with. So you're setting the scene now. Um, I uh, and, and is this is this usually 
done kind of in it, this is an actual conversation like I will bring stuff up and you'll respond to it or is it more like I say this one and then on your turn you say something else it has been uh, played both ways, both ways? Uh, okay. but it usually is uh, the the latter more like a sh short monologues okay. we we exchange short monologues that's fine I just, yeah and I think there's probably going to be times where it may make more sense to do one than the other I just wanted to make sure if there was a uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, you're, was, you you're know, good. Um, I, you know, I think um, kind of we get this this quick scene of of both of us standing in uh, this underground space as water is starting to pour in. Um, uh, it's unclear exactly what has happened, but uh, my character is is not in a good place. Uh, and then we kind of flash back, um, and I want to uh, go back to the memory of of. Uh, me in a marketplace, um, I uh, I approach kind of a a, a wealthy looking uh, woman about uh, a job that I'm that I'm hoping to get, um, and as Thrag kind of engages her around um, his his desire to go on this quest, I'm informed that someone else has already been hired uh, for that job. And it's uh, it was Yuri. Is that your character's name? Yeah, correct. Uh, and we see Yuri kind of step into frame. Um, do you want to describe Yuri rather than me describing Yuri? What do I what do I remember about Yuri? Uh, you can see a guy with a uh, hair to the shoulders, brown hair, very straight, uh, maybe a, a goatee, I would say. And uh, I use a worn hat and uh, a, a cloak. I have a small dagger right to me at my waist. Um, yeah, the, um, uh, and I think this is not the first time I've lost a job to Yuri. So we see Thrag uh, kind of dark, like in dark clothes with uh, like, you know, daggers and tools kind of bristling around their body, uh, grimace, um, and uh, gonna shoot a, an angry look at, at Yuri. Um, before kind of um, stepping off to the side as y'all kind of discuss the final details of this this quest, um, I just position myself to be able to follow you as you head out on it. And so I think I want to narrate the loss, essentially the loss of the of the job, like of this of the hiring of this to Yuri, uh, right. and then kind of me deciding I'm going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go anyways. Um, and, uh, do you bring up this memory uh, now in the present? Do you say yeah, anything? Yeah, I think to this me is me. This is me going back to like, uh, like you always, you know, um, like lately you were always getting the good jobs. Like I don't know, I don't know what you've done to convince everyone that you're so talented, but you know, you've never fooled me. <laughs> good, great. Uh, so uh, this is your scene. Now you have the option to do the mechanical effect of playing a memory. Uh, if you go to the cheat sheet, is it says you may play one extra card. So if you want to go ahead, you can change your um, yeah narration and play the, the 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 next card that you have in your hand. I'm I'm going to do that because it seems like a fun thing to do. So I am going to do um I'm gonna do a wish of shelter. Okay. Um, and I have to go off the last card played, right? Correct? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. And ideally, when we do this, like, we can do whatever we want, but like you said, when we pair up, like, if I pair up star to star here, then the clock isn't advancing and we're keeping more narration in play as opposed yeah. to if I go to a different route that would... Uh, be the the thing that makes the clock advance is uh, the symbols have to be the same always. Right, always. Yeah, but we what makes the clock advance if it's the sides, the sides are not of the same size. Cool. If you have to rotate the cards for some reason, excellent. Then the clock the clock advances. I like that. Not um, the case. So I um, I'm doing a wish, right? Um, mm -hmm. uh, I wish you should. I hope. Why don't you? I share a desire, a piece of device, advice, or demand a promise. Um, and then my partner may pass me a card if they want to. Um, uh, I think we are, you know, we're back in the cave since this is no longer a memory. Um, but um, 
Thrag um, pulls out like a small, um, like uh, a small folio locket, right? So like a like a, like, a, like, a, like almost like a makeup compact uh, with a with a picture in it, uh, and hands it over to Yuri and um, says, um, uh, "I need you to do I need you to do one thing for me. Um, I need you to make sure she's taken care of." And inside, you see a, a hand drawn picture. Of a small, uh, a small girl who looks like in the picture that she's probably somewhere between um, seven and ten. Um, she's got uh, blonde, dirty kind of locks from the the light picture. You can't tell because it's a little bit worn and old, but looks like looks like a younger version uh, of Thrag um, in a lot of ways. Um, I she does she doesn't know me. She's never met me, but. But I've taken care of her all these years, and I won't be able to anymore. Damn, twenty, good. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> all right, so uh, you play the wish. Uh, the effect is, uh, I may pass you a card. Hmm. Since you have none, you know. Uh, you know what? Let me see what I have in my hands. Passage. Passage is something that I am interested in seeing you role play, so I'll go ahead and pass it to you. Okay. So now it's my turn. I can go ahead and also draw one or two cards. Let me see what are my options. Fate, if I draw one, and Fate and Barrier, if I draw two. Oh, and the connections. Mm. I do want to ask where who did the art for these because they're okay. So uh, gorgeous. Thanks for asking it. I have to give credit to uh, this is a Ukrainian artist. She's called Anastasia Khmelevska, and uh, she's awesome. Amazing, isn't it? Very evocative. Uh, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and draw two because I'm very interested in apology about a barrier. And uh, I can see a good connection there. And that's what I'm gonna t gonna play. So I have to rotate here. Uh, since the sides are still the same size, the edges are the same size, we're good. We don't advance the, the goodbye pile. Now I have to narrate an apology about a barrier. So uh, I see myself, I think Yuri is uh, two or three steps above uh, Thrag. I think maybe Thrag got stuck between rocks and that's why he, he's not able to, to get out of here. And uh, I'm still in denial. I, I, uh, I think uh, Yuri cherishes this, this rivalry because uh, no one has ever being up to the challenge and uh that, that's not how he saw this ending so uh yuri grabs the the it's a locket you said right tony yeah it's like a little fully like a metal little like hinged folio thing but yeah a locket yeah so as soon as you you hand it to me i i grab you by the arm and uh i say it shouldn't be this way, you know. Is you're just, you're just too much fun. We, we, we should go. I mean, if I, if I hadn't rushed to this place, maybe you wouldn't have been caught in this in this trap, and uh, we could have many more years. I. I uh, I'm sorry, Thrag. I, I I feel that sometimes I just I couldn't help to be in in your way just because I know you were always the best, and I wanted to prove myself and to be up against you every time I could. So uh, maybe I uh, maybe I caused this. Maybe I put this. I, I I'm stopping you from living your life of adventure because of my ambitions i i i'm sorry i uh, i can't 
So that's my scene. And I can, uh, you can skip your next draw if you want to. All right, uh, that's my turn. You're up. Um, I I don't. I'm not gonna skip my next draw. I'm gonna go ahead and take care. I think. Um, let's see. So I've got care and passage. Um, and. Let's see. Um, oh, let's uh, let's. <laughs> I'm trying to think how much we want to ratchet this up. Um, uh, if you need to 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 advance goodbye pile, go ahead, man. It's no, gonna no, no, come no. up sometime. <laughs> well, actually, I, I, oh, I can't. Well, see, I can't place it, so I can't do a memory right now because uh, it's that would be blocked. Correct. Uh. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, the memory is up there. Oh, yeah, if you have to it's rotate, on, it's, it's on the blocked. side, right? So, yeah, so yeah. Um, let's see. Now, after four or five cards, it, it gets mechanically interesting as well because it the narrative is informed by the limited decisions yeah, yeah, or yeah, the yeah, limited yeah. options you have. Um, uh, so, I'm going to look at care instead. Um, Yeah, this is going to cause a, a shift no matter what I think because the only way I could do I could do a memory but I don't have one that I think feels right right now so I think we're gonna mm -hmm. go care and we're gonna do a uh I'm gonna do a wish um again I, I like you know as you as you talk about this like thrag just seems to be in another place um and uh um you know i go uh she uh she likes apples with with fresh brown sugar and uh, uh they, they don't they don't have any uh at the orphanage and so lots of times i'll i'll sneak up and just uh just you know slide one where i know she goes to read uh, under a tree and I don't think she's ever figured out why there are these brown sugar coated apples there but here take this and I give <laughs> I give you a pouch filled with brown sugar uh, to take with you um, oh my god I read a little wet maybe <laughs> it, it is like yeah the, the pouch is a little wet the sugar is a little runny like you you know you could bring it up um but uh it you know <laughs> uh but it doesn't it doesn't quite feel right um you know, as Thrag kind of talks about uh, this this daughter who, you know, and he never even, like, at this point has mentioned her name, but just kind of goes over the the small things he does to try to make her life better um, and kind of imploring you to provide similar types of care uh, for her. Excellent. Uh, and we are okay. going to advance, and because it was offside... We're going to advance that clock one, right? So this is going to go right. Here. So you have to shift click to select all of the cards. Oh, all of the, the cards. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll let you take care of that, and I'm going to. Uh, okay. I'll look at the mechanical it's, thing. There you go. We lost uh, one card, so I think we see the water uh, rising a little uh, faster to represent the, the the time advancing, and uh, it's maybe up to your to your waist already. Um, and uh, you play the wish, yeah. So, so you can pass a card, card if you want. Okay. Um, I don't think I do. That's fine. I'm, all right. So let me draw. I'm gonna draw one card. What do I have here? I have fate, and I have bond. Mm. And for the connections. Um, where is your memory? It's up here on the top, right? Memory is, uh, it's off to the side here. Mm -hmm. Right. If I zoom in, does it zoom for you too? Or yeah. it's, oh, no, uh, it's, it's what people are seeing, whatever is on my screen. 
Ah, okay, cool. So I will use it. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure. I'm trying to avoid advancing the pile, but I don't think I'll be able to. Oh, no. I, well, I don't want to roleplay an apology right now. I just did. And I have, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to have to advance the goodbye pile again. I love the idea that, like, as we do that, like, more spurts of water just start, like, opening up in the sides of the space. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So, a recognition about bond or fate. I think fate. And I have to rotate it here. So, by the end of my scene, we advance the goodbye pile once again. So recognition is thank you for, if it weren't for you, I appreciate you for. You show your appreciation for them or for something they have done. And it's about fate. Okay. So uh, I grabbed this bag of uh, brown sugar and finally let go of your, of your arm. And I say, you know, Thrag, after all these years, you can still impress me and surprise me. I, uh, I knew of your skills, I knew of your talents, I knew of your sneakiness, and uh, I think I underestimated you. And uh, what you're showing to me here is that, you, you know, you came to this place knowing what could happen. And now I see that the risks you took weren't selfish after all. You worried about the fate of a little girl. And uh, now I see my life. I see what I have accomplished. And uh, I know I'm younger than you and but uh, that doesn't mean i shouldn't be aiming to do more with my life maybe i'm just here trying to escape the responsibility that i should have towards other people and in this small bag of brown sugar here you showed me much more about yourself than in all the, the years that uh, we spent crossing paths throughout our adventures. And uh, I praise you for that. I'll make sure she's taken care of. And that's my scene. You may pass a card to your partner. Let me see. Bond. Now we are both at one, so I think we're good. Cool. Ah, I have to advance the goodbye pile. Yep. So, clock is ticking. Oops, I uh, bound this here. Two, three, oh, four. We lose joy. No. Uh, yeah, we just lost joy. <laughs> uh, okay, we have just uh, five more cards on the grid. I get. To, I choose a draw first, correct? Yeah, one or two. Um, I am going to go ahead and take two because I like to be... Uh, ridiculous uh, <laughs> and uh, I am going to apologize uh, about a passage um, you cannot you have to play connected to the last card I played oh dang it that's right but you, you can you, you can do it uh, my apologies oh, yeah, up there yeah, that's great that's even better because it's not yeah yeah it's aligned yeah uh, rotate rotate there we go. Um, that's fine. I just had fixated on something else. Um, so, um, look, um, I, I think it's I think it's great that you you feel that way. I, I got to be honest about something though, and Thrag <laughs> start. We like I think we see the camera flash back to, you know, as y'all coming through the tomb. Thrag is kind of like. Um, following behind you um 
And uh, you, though I think you've become aware of his presence a couple times in this moment, you're not aware of exactly where he is around you. Um, and you're coming up and you can see, we can see kind of uh, through the eye of the camera, you starting to enter into this space. Um, like you can, we can kind of see it ahead. It's just, it's just a few feet away. Um, when all of a sudden the thrag intentionally triggers a trap and tries to push past you. Uh, but um, when he does, uh, he knocks you forward, and it's what ends up causing him to get squished between these two pillars. Um, I, I, I think it's great that you think I'm a great guy. Um, the reality is I, I would have left you here for dead, though. Um, I, don't, I don't have any right to, to ask these things of you. Um, and, like, for me, you were always just an annoying pest who got in the way. Um, and I was, I was happy to kill you. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for, for never considering the fact that you might be a fully realized person and thinking of you just as an obstacle that gets in my way. That's great. Tony. Very, very good storytelling there. <laughs> uh, let's see. I've got two, You've got one. I did an apology. Your partner can skip their next draw if they want. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, I might. I might. What do we have here? It's a secret. Mm. Am I greedy to keep the, the, to to buy the, to draw the secret, or sh am I interested in letting you rope? Oh well. You might pass the secret to me afterwards. That's always a possibility. Um, should I skip this draw? I will. I will skip this draw. So there's, I have... there's, there is a really interesting pacing thing that happens at this point also, too, because those decisions, if we're trying to end with the same amount of cards, mm -hmm. start to impact, like, I've got two, you've got one, there's only three left. Depending on what you have to place, that might mean only two <laughs> left. Yeah, exactly. Second. That's cool. I exactly. like that. So I'm going to play a memory about Bond. So uh, what I'm going to bring up is uh, that's the not the, that's not the first time we get in trouble together, searching our our treasures and everything, and. Uh, after you say what you said, I uh, I can help, but uh, I'm surprised at first, but I can help but to smile a little bit. And uh, we flash back to uh, a scene. Maybe we were climbing a gigantic tree, like rushing to the top of a tree to see who would get there first. It was the, the prize we were after was a kind of uh, an egg a rare egg, and uh, uh, we see that um, we're doing it quietly and uh, just uh, rushing against each other. But at some point, you see that you are, are, you're taking the lead, and uh, there is this problem that the gigantic bird could come to us and uh, maybe attack us if we don't keep it quiet. So uh, instead of uh, me letting my letting you go up because you were winning the race, so to speak, I kind of uh, reach to grab a branch that you would step on and I crack it a little bit. Uh, and then when you put your foot on it, it breaks and you kind of fall like two or three branches before you, you grab uh, uh, to another one safe. But this creates a lot of noise and it uh, attracts the bird that starts uh, attacking us. And uh, we end this, this flashback uh, with us running for our lives, trying to escape this forest. And uh, we ruined our prize for both of us. And uh, I, say to, I uh, say to you briefly, well, that was not the first time we tried to sabotage each other. I wouldn't expect less from you, Thrag, actually. And uh, you remember that egg, right? Well, 
the, that branch is stepped on. That was me. Sorry about that. We, uh, we were always trying to get ahead of each other and uh, we never felt that one of those would be the last one. And uh, yet here we are in that scene. As a memory, I could play another card, but I don't have one. So that's you, Tony. Okay. So I've got path and I've got exposure. But you do have to draw one or two. I have to draw one or two. So I guess I'll take secret. <laughs> <laughs> I've got secret. Um, this is your last card. Uh, excellent. Okay, cool. Um, I think this works out the way I'm going to want it to when it's all said and done, or maybe I ruin everything for us. Who knows? Uh, I'm going to play a wish. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, that's a, oh, 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 oh. is that what I wanted to do? Wish about path. Wish about exposure. Wish about path. Wish about a secret. Wish about a path. Um, okay. I wish about a path. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, that was a, that was a good one. And I think we see maybe a series of vignettes of like us as the water is starting to, to get up around, uh, Thrag's like chest at this point in time or our chest at this point. Um, you know, uh, us kind of swapping stories as the water level, um, rises, even though it may not be the 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 smartest thing and then you know if if i do i do wish that you know we could go back and do it all again but more than anything um you know i i i just wish that there was a way for for you to get back out through through where i'm at you know like i wish i wasn't i wasn't blocking the way out for you um and uh you know, I, I'm I'm sure you'll pull it through in the end, but uh, like I I don't know how you're gonna get out of here. Um, but but I I I wish you could. Um, and I'm oh. gonna I'm gonna pass you as part of that that wish secret. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> okay, so I do have a secret, and I'll have to. Draw. What's the card here? Change. Change is interesting. And uh, I can do a recognition about change. And secret. Recognition about secret too. Or apology about a secret. Oh, that's pretty good. So I am uh, I'm going to draw here change but i'm going to play secret and it's aligned so right here at the top uh, so you say that this to me and um i look at you and uh, i say well i appreciate your concern buddy but uh, I uh, held back another piece of information. I reach to my coat and I unfold a map of the dungeon that you weren't aware I had with me. And I point here, here's my way out. I, uh, I point towards uh, an end of the, the room that's uh, already flooded the, and uh, I say to you, I, uh, I'll have to swim. And you remember from that time in the island that I'm not a very good swimmer. But I'll spend some more time here with you. And I, I, 
I apologize, I didn't show it before, but uh, it wouldn't help much, right? But uh, just, uh, just to let you know, I might be able to, to pull it off. I might, I might be able to escape. And uh, I see the water already at my waist as one uh, big block of rock falls from one of the walls and starts pouring water even faster. And uh, I see that uh, the water rises up to your chin and I understand it's probably time to go. As an apology, your partner may skip their next draw. So you have this option if you want to, but I'm or you not, can go ahead. But I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> I figured as much. <laughs> but I appreciate the option. Uh, so I have a question right here. If, Excellent. If, if things don't line up, there are no more cards to advance the clock. Does that just not matter? No, it doesn't. Okay. Because now it's the, the game's going to end. End after this play. Exactly. So it doesn't matter what would happen. Excellent. Anyhow. All right. So I've got the options to, uh, for this last play, I've got fear and change. And the things I can do are... Um, a wish, uh, exposure, or memory. Um, I is there is there a postscript or anything we're gonna do, or is there a? There is. Okay. There is a, a debrief that's uh, the probably most heart wrenching part of the game. Oh, okay, so then let. Uh, and is that still narrative part in part? It is. So I'm not looking to tie things up here. I'm looking to... Uh, actually, that's the last things we say to each other. Okay, cool. And then uh, we can uh, maybe pull out the snippets from the past or the future. But uh, the scene ends now. Um... A wish about fear. Um, so I, this, I gotta tell you is, is about the, the worst way I would have thought about going out. Um, I always figured I'd, I'd get a knife in the guts or a sword in the back or that it would happen quick. I, I didn't think it would be, I didn't think it would be something I would have to, to wait for, um, or anticipate. And, um, I just, I just gotta say, you know, you're going to get out of here. You're going to, you're going to do whatever you do. You're, you're going to get this back to the woman. But if I could tell you one thing, like, it might all be worth it or not, but figure out how you want to die because this wasn't it for me. Damn. <laughs> Very good. So we reached the end of the game. I probably should read what happens now. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So the, uh, the person leaving picks up the goodbye card and places it next to the last card played. That would be me. And I just bloop, put it here. There's no more, more time for stories. There's maybe time for holding hands. The person leaving says the words on the goodbye card, then gets up and leaves. If you were playing physically, I literally leave the room, leave the table. And after a short break, we get together at the table to look at the cards that we didn't play. The cards left in our hands are things that we didn't say to each other. You just wish we had a little more time together. 
We do not share our thoughts verbally, we just consider it. If you have the same amount of cards, it means that we were on the same page, at least, and it was, after all, a good last conversation. Then we reveal the cards under the goodbye pile. Those are the things we're going to forget about each other. In this case, oh. probably me about you. And look, we look at them together and reflect on the, the things so that we'll have. Here's what I'll propose since we're doing it virtually. Um, we usually do like for our, we have a little debrief thing we do at the end period where we just talk about the game. Uh, but we usually take a little break or if, if it's a if it's a longer game, we'll oftentimes take a break there. What if whenever we're done with this part, we'll just stop talking and I'll kick us straight to break and you and I can go refill our cups, take that time to give that space and then come back about five minutes later. Does that work? It works perfectly. All right, let's do that. So uh, I look at you in the eyes and see that there is no more time to say anything. Otherwise, I'll be stuck with here, here with you. As I see the water finally covering, covering your head, I say, I'm sorry, I have to go, goodbye. And then I jump into the water and make it through the secret passage displayed on the map. Now, the cards we have here that we didn't talk about. We didn't talk about change. And we didn't talk about exposure. And here are the things I'm going to forget about you in the coming years. I'll forget about joy, clashes about trial and about lies. And this is the end of the game.
We are back live, uh, finishing up our play uh, and doing our debrief for, uh, I guess this is it. Um, I have been super thrilled to sit down and actually get a chance to learn more about how the game is played, what Caesar's done with it, uh, and dive into the narrative process with you. It's been awesome to have you here. So we have finished our, our main story. Um, we, we took a, a little break because you said, like you had said, if we had been actually in the same space, then you would want the, you'd have the person leave the room, actually have that moment of departure and then a kind of a pause for, uh, reflection. Um, what do we do next? Well, uh, in the, the rules of the game, we actually are over, but so, since we're doing this for an audience, I think we can take the opportunity to share with them uh, the feelings we had after the debrief, looking at the cards, the things we were left unsaid and things we were forget. And how does that communicate with the theme of the game of the saying goodbye and things like that? So uh, since that's your first time playing, I, I'd like to ask you, how, how does it feel to see the things that we weren't able to talk to each other in? Stuff like that, and um, how does that work for the theme? It, it, like in all honesty, it the the it, and I, I love the fact that this is a totally random reality, right? I love the fact that essentially, like we didn't we didn't have like change. We didn't talk about change. Let me get everybody. Let everybody help me see them. Um, and the fact that like though we <laughs> though we to a certain degree like saw kind of a slight dynamic moment, like. We really saw Thrag as a dirt bag being like, I'm sorry I got caught being a dirt bag. Please take care of my child. <laughs> um, and even basically kind of saying, I wish we could go back and be horrible to each other all again, <laughs> but enjoy it this time, which is kind of an interesting take. Like, So there's a level of dynamism there without necessarily like a desire to change, which I think is really interesting. Like what, what would the change have looked like? Um, and then exposure is interesting for a lot, in a lot of ways too. What what are what are your, some of your thoughts? Exposure. I really like this card because I uh, <clears throat> I think that uh, when we are in situations of saying goodbye, where you know it's the last time we're going to talk to someone, maybe it's your last chance to be vulnerable and show a side yeah. of you that you didn't show before. And uh, exposure communicates that to me that we uh, we both were trying to impress each other so much. And uh, we didn't have the chance to, to maybe show uh, our weak spots and be comfortable with that. And it could be this time, but it wasn't. Uh, we, hadn't, we hadn't had the time to, to do so. So uh, I, I really like exposure as a, as a concept. I do too. It's a great, because again, like all of these cards, the, the flexibility of what you use, but exposure for both the emotional quality as well as just the practical, like, like what does it mean to be exposed maybe in a memory, right? Or maybe in some other way is very cool. Um, yeah. I also liked the fact that like, there were three things that are like, hey, maybe as, uh, that you'll forget, or like, maybe you'll forget about the lies we told each other. Maybe you'll forget about the hardships of our relationship. Maybe you'll forget even that we were rivals, right? Mm -hmm. But along with that, having joy thrown into that mix is also yeah. just a really, like that the, that maybe some of those things in that foilish relationship are what helped derive the joy. And that as you, as you kind of forget about them, the joy gets lost also. That's an interesting. Yeah. I, I had the same thought because uh, maybe part of uh, the joy we had was clashing and, right. uh, and, and lying, poking at each other. And since those things fade into the, the joy goes, as well so uh that that was a, an interesting combination of things to forget for yeah. sure um i i had an absolute blast playing this like i said I, the the I, i'd seen when you did it like the once i saw the kickstarter campaign which again people should go check out the link right below our faces um but the the art totally helps sell this theme as well as it just being a really evocative process i i would love to hear a little bit more about from you kind of uh, where the idea came from and how it developed. Because the 18-card RPG challenge, like I said, a lot of people were excited about it. I was excited about it. Uh, it's a very different, very minimalist way of doing storytelling. Um, and there's a lot of challenges that come in with that. Yeah. And you've done a really, this is, you've created a phenomenal story game that's got a ton of variety and replayability in it within that space. So I'd love to hear a little bit more about how you just approached the the experience. Right. So, uh 
actually the, the challenge allowed you for for you to have at, uh, at the most three six-sided dice or a set of polyhedral dice if you wanted and even a, a sheet to use right. as a character sheet and everything but from the get-go i decided now you know what I don't want any of that. I um, want to try to focus on an interesting um, card play, uh, something that uh, we can have our eyes concentrated on the same thing uh, all the time. But the idea for that came from a place of uh, sorrow uh, because at the moment I was living alone in a tiny village in Italy, uh, in the middle of the pandemic, so I was, I was isolated and I uh, uh, away from my family, away from my friends, and uh, it was slowly. It's kind of it's a moment you get to reflect a lot, and uh, in the middle of that, I uh, I started remembering my father, who I had lost uh, for cancer four years before, and uh, I remembered being by by his bed knowing that he what was going to happen and uh thinking to myself if i have something to say to my father this is my last chance mm. and uh, the dynamics that go into it fascinated me uh, looking uh looking to it for uh, uh, a more i don't know a more privileged perspective that i wasn't suffering as much as i was at the moment which means that uh I was interested to investigate this uh, this feeling that you have when you're having your last conversation that you want to talk, you want to say a lot, but also you're trying to be meaningful of each other's feelings and not trying to, you know, just dump our feelings. I have to confess everything and I uh, just, uh, you know, feel, oof, I am relieved. But the other person, you're trying not to hurt their feelings in the process. And so it's a very specific dynamic. And uh, when they presented the challenge, they said, uh, we don't want a, uh, a d and in 18 cards. We're looking right. for something different. So I said, okay, that's right down my alley. So uh, what can I do from here? So I was inundated with these feelings. And I, as I, I normally do, I make games to deal <laughs> with what I'm feeling at the moment. Uh, so I came up with the name and the subtitle. I guess this is it. A two-player game about saying goodbye. When I came up with this name, I, I was teary-eyed. I got a little moved without even knowing anything about what the game would be. But uh, just the concept of playing a game in face of each other and knowing that you're role-playing a final goodbye just got me moved. So I said, well, if it's if it strikes this kind of chord with me, I should make it, even if it doesn't make to the, the the finals of the competition. I want this game to exist. So it was uh, it was materializing the feelings I had at the moment. So when I had and and I wrote this game in six days, with the cards and everything. And I submit it, but I never thought it would win because for the first role-playing game of a, of a chain of games, I thought they would go, even if they're not chasing a D&D like, I, I thought it would go for something more, I don't know, palatable or more mainstream. But uh, they, they, they saw something there and uh, I ended up winning the, the, the contest to my utmost surprise. That's beautiful. I love, I love, I love the idea of games as a way, like there are people who will like, and this is not whatever people's approach to game design is. I, I respect because I think different people design different games from different spaces. And I think lots of times people will ask is game design or RPG design art. And I'm fine with whatever answer people give to that. Right. Like if they say yes, when I design RPGs, it's art. Great. It's art. If they say no, it's not, I'm a more of a, a mechanical approach to how I build things. And I don't think of it as art. That's fine. But I also love to hear some of those sub pieces of like, this is how I process my experiences and how I'm giving myself that space to take something very personal and put it into my games. And I think that's where we really see those artistic dimensions start to take off because you're inviting people to tell a story that you have lived, but in a completely different way and in an infinite number 
of ways, but it's also things that they've lived through too. So I just, I, I love being able to see that. And I really appreciate you, uh, like you sharing it, not just with me, but with, uh, with the community through this game. That's such a, that's such a huge piece of that. Um, I, I was, I was shocked as I like went through the rules about like how strong mechanically this really incorporated the cards while keeping a completely narrative focus on things. Um, you know, mechanics are at their best when they fade in the background, even though like there was, cause it's ver- digital, right? A lot of like, Hey, like having to flip back and forth between things at the table, I can imagine like, it's very easy to have the reference card in front of you to pass it to the person whose story it is to let people kind of know here's where you're going to be at. And a lot of that, a lot of these mechanics feel like they would just fade into the background um, as play. Cause they, they already did pretty seamlessly in a virtual experience too. Um, some of my like particular questions are like, so setup is randomized, correct? Like that's because I was like trying to think that you start with 12 cards on the mm-hmm. grid. Everybody has, um, uh, one card, one card in front hands. of them. Right. And so you've got four cards that essentially are no wait, two cards that are not in play because of the other yeah. types of cards that are exist, right. The starting card and the ending card. Um, and so that so means every single random. time your, your tableau is different. It, it happens in a different order. Uh, and you have two cards that at default are taken out of the narrative mm-hmm. uh, entirely. And that, that choice alone uh, automatically starts to do some things. And it is really interesting, like, especially like there's constant conversations about old school and trad games versus OSR games versus story games and all those different pieces. But a lot of times the randomization element is something we don't see as commonly in story games. Story games tend to be a little bit more on rails and have a little bit more hit, hit this beat, hit this beat, hit this beat. And the way you've kind of deconstructed that in this game is, is really interesting. Um, I know it was only six days, but were there any kind of major changes or kind of aha moments for you in the process of design where you were like, where some, you realized you needed to do something that wasn't already in play? Oh, yeah. Like uh, every 35 minutes of the game design, <laughs> <laughs> I had one of those. So uh, the first big challenge was coming up with uh, 16 prompts that comprised most of the themes that could come up on a final conversation. So uh, scratching those uh, those words and putting some back and uh, removing uh, was a, a part of the process. And then the four symbols around that uh, they are kind of uh, complementary. So a memory is something from the past. The wish is something from the future. Future apology is, some, is something that you wish hadn't happened, and a recognition is something that uh, you uh, praise for being for having have happened. So this four, when I got those closed, I had I, I knew that the the majority of the game was done. But then experimenting with the size of the grid uh it was bigger i i the first draft i had all the cards on the grid four by four so uh when i was experimenting with it uh i uh tried to reduce it for size reasons i it was taking too much space of a table and then i said what if we start with two cards already in the, the goodbye pile random randomly and not only did this give the, the game uh, a better pacing and this uh, surprise at the end to see the things you will forget about each other that you didn't know were even an option to talk about. And uh, so at the first time I play tested it against myself <laughs> with the grid, grid and the two cards burned from the beginning, I said, oh, okay, this game is much better now. I'm so glad that 4x4 four four took too much space <laughs> of the table. <laughs> Otherwise, maybe I wouldn't have done it. And, uh, and another thing that happened after I won the contest was some refining of the rules that happened with the playtests that Button Shy crew made. And uh, so this, you may pass a card and things like that. They used to be two different uh, powers, so to speak, depending if you connected it with the edges of the same size or not. Uh, but it ended up uh, taking too much time of you going back to the rules. And since it's, it's such a narrative game, uh, when we cut that, Jason Tagmar from Button Chai is one of the guys responsible. That's the person I talked to. Yeah. 
for streamlining these these rules, I said, oh, okay, no, no, this game is much better. So kudos to them because uh, now you just take a look at the one line after you narrate and you decide, uh, do I want to do that or not? And th the game moves on. Otherwise, you would have to have a, a large reference page next to you and uh, not this short cheat sheet that we have here that comes with the, the cards right. inside, inside of the wallet. It takes exactly the size of one card. So uh, it's very easy to have at hand. Yeah, I, I love it. Like I said, the, the entire art was evocative. I was, I, before I had seen all the cards, I almost was curious if they all fill, created one big tableau together. Like, because the art is so complimentary and so much of it goes outside the page. Uh, but it's just absolutely gorgeous. Each, each individual piece um, yeah. is so evocative and it, like, and suggestive, right? Like, again, mm -hmm. you, you mentioned the artist earlier. I just, I, Anastasia, yes. Yeah, when, when you come in and you start looking at the images, I'm going to pop some of them up for people again to be able to see. Uh, like they just, they each have small details that just give you a suggestion about a lot of things this could be without telling you any one particular thing. And I think in yeah. a lot of narrative games, that's that's the big challenge is how do I give you a sense of this without forcing you to say this thing, right? Yeah, not um, being too prescri prescriptive, but not too abstract. That doesn't right. help you at all, right? So yeah, I had prototype cards for the challenge using public public domain uh, art. And I found an artist that uh, had these kinds of images that could uh, evoke a feeling and uh, leave it open for interpretation. So that was the kind of brief they provided the artist with so that she could uh, work with uh, the images that can give you a di direction that you can follow, but uh, it feels inspiring when you just grab a card. So the rules actually say if you want to, you can use aspects of, of the image to complement uh, your role playing, your yeah. what you're about to say. So I think that's good. Uh, I am, I, like I said, I, I, it was such an honor to sit down and play with you. I love getting to play with somebody for a new time, but I also love when it's somebody who can sit down, we can, we can tell a story together that touches on details of intimacy also too. Um, and I think this is a game that, that tremendously opens people up to be able to say that. I love the one stays, one leaves aspect of it. Um, I, I, I think there's so many small pieces that fit into this game. And one of my favorite things is like hearing, yeah, there's stuff that changed every 35 minutes, but also that that short process of quick iteration, I think leads oftentimes to some of the best design work. I'm, I'm always like, can I get this 85% done in a few days? And if so, then I know I can get it 100% done eventually. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but I, I, I think if I had a, a 20 more days, I, I would have destroyed the game. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm glad I did it. <laughs> no. Um, what I think my big question for you is, and this is, you know, it's, it's fine to say nothing or I don't know, but uh, like what is next for you? So this this game is, it's it's funding, it's funding well. Uh, Button Shy has a new, huge line of, or not a huge line, but like four <laughs> other games that are coming out from other designers. But for you, what is what are you working on that's coming up soon that you're excited about? Right. Uh, thanks for asking that. I just released today uh, an SRD for a new system that uh, came out of a tweet I made back in October with a kind of a pusher look, blackjack inspired mechanic uh, from a, a dice roll, a single D6 roll. So yeah, uh, uh, sometimes games come from a place of uh, feelings and exploration of feelings. Sometimes it comes from a completely random mechanic shared on a tweet. Uh, and uh, it ended up uh, a book, a 50-page book with a, a complete SRD with step-by-step -step process for you to make your own games, including a two-page template you can fill in and make your own game with it. So uh, I just dropped it. I'm very excited about it. I think people could uh, use it. It's a GM-less system. And... Um, and very you narrative. That, you created that just as the SRD, right? So if, somebody, if somebody's out there watching, they don't know what an SRD is. It's the system okay. reference document. It's a clunky term that we hold over from coding, but it basically yeah. means the, the course, the core mechanical and system concepts of a game. Uh, but you exactly. just you just put it out as an SRD. You haven't you have not even done anything. You're just like, here's the core system I want to play around with, and I want other people to play around with. I, I yeah, I, I actually have, but uh, I mean, I wrote the, the the SRD more like a guide. Because what I got from some shorter SRDs out there is just like, uh, here are the rules, here are some options what you can do with the rules, now go make your game. 
and I felt I, I could do a, a guide, a step-by-step -step guide. So uh, here's how you make a game using these rules. First, do this. And then I created an example game while explaining I love that. Uh, how to do it. And I ended up uh, releasing the game as a, a separate piece. But it's also embedded in the middle of the, the, the SRD as an example. So, uh, yeah, I, I think if you read through it, it's an, an easy read. You can, uh, by the end of the, the, the reading, you have your own game done. So uh, I'm excited about it. And uh, I'm a full-time game designer. It's, um, so I expect to release 10 more games this year. Otherwise, I don't pay rent and don't <laughs> buy groceries. <laughs> well, you, you, you put out the FKR Freeform Just for Kids uh, thing yeah. like earlier this month. You had this up on on uh, you put out push today and, and relics which is the game that you created with that uh, yeah all that by the way you can find all of that over on the itch page i dropped the link uh in the chat here on, oh yeah uh, I, I didn't say where people can find me you asked me that sorry tony <laughs> you're, you're fine um I, I i i got the links in there it's just it's just it was on there and i just i want to make sure people know uh that that they can find this stuff and that you are you're putting out a lot of really really great stuff right now and i would love for people to be able to go check it out and so um when somebody makes one great game i'm always like okay how do we how do we help support if the creator wants to keep on making games especially if they're full-time designers how do we continue to support the work that they're doing so hopefully we can have you back on sometime in the future to run uh something else and so um with that said uh, I, I know it's been about an hour and a half and even though our streams are typically two and a half hours um i know that uh, you've got a life to get back to um, i want to encourage people again you go to ttrpg.link slash guest uh, I guess KS. So that's, I guess Kickstarter um, to check out this game. It's got two, last 48 hours right now. Um, and uh, it's funded. It's going well. I cannot recommend button shy games enough. Again, I'm super excited to see them step in to RPGs largely because their format, I think will encourage a lot of really creative design because it's 18 card pocket games that come in these beautiful wallets. The art's always amazing. The concepts are always fresh and they do really, really, really great work. I, I don't know if I said it live or if I said it before we went live, like at PAX Unplugged, I bought everything they have because there's <laughs> lots of times that you can't get it and they had reprinted everything and they sold out of their their stuff before the end of the weekend. They're these beautiful small little games that are great to carry around uh, with you. And I'm so glad that they're going to have RPGs coming out uh, more and more. And so. they're very good people as well. Yeah, great a great team, <laughs> very, very focused on also like, uh, handmade, sustainable, which is why things take longer. Like there's a lot of craft that goes in to what they make. And so uh, please go check them out. Uh, speaking of, of great games and great things coming out, we tomorrow are sitting down with Alicia Furness and Chris Bissett to talk about their Zemo zine, The Unquiet Dark. It is a Brenda Wood Bay prequel zine set in the jazz era. So two creators who I absolutely adore and I'm very excited to sit down with them. Uh, tomorrow night, we are playing Fragged 2nd Edition, um, which is by Australian creator um, Wade Dyer, and uh, Wade's going to be running uh, at that for us. It's a medium weight sci-fi RPG that you can use to create uh, any type of sci-fi game that you want to. Also, our game 13 Hunters is live over on GameFound right now. Uh, we would love any support you can give us in supporting the game or just getting word out about it. GameFound doesn't have the same kind of support for RPGs uh, that Kickstarter has at the moment. We've been early advocates for helping make that happen. You can go to ttrpg.link slash 13h to check that out. There's links down in the show notes uh, for all of that good stuff, though, uh, too. And we'll make sure that we update the show notes, uh, both the title, because uh, I, it's the title of our last stream, uh, but also um, to make sure that uh, Caesar's um, itch bio is in there also, too, so you can go check out Push and uh, Relics as well. So uh, with all that said, we've never figured out a good way to end our actual play stream, so uh, we're just going to wave at the camera until I take us offline. Bye, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We'll Bye. See Thanks you. for having me. See you. Thank you so much.